Good morning, good day, welcome, revenue, whatever. <laughs> welcome to our real time daily trading ideas, our global webinar. We have five days a week, we have five different traders. We will speak about trading ideas, strategies, market screen, and maybe one or two questions from your side directly answered in our webinar. Our goal is quick and smart, so let's have a nice start like every day. And today it's Monday, 17th of September 2018. Welcome to Admire Markets. We will start like every day with our risk disclaimer. Forex and CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. If you are a starter, please start with a demo account and make yourself familiar with long trading, short trading, leverage trading, and your personal risk management. If you'd like to read the full risk disclaimer, just visit one of our web pages, for example, admiremarkets.com, and you will find everything in details there. Also, information about retail clients and professional clients. I guess you know, since August 2018, we have a ESMA regulation in the whole European Union. Since then, retail clients will get a maximum leverage for Forex up to 30, and only professional clients, if they are eligible and apply for that, can still get a higher leverage up to 500. A picture shows sometimes more than 1,000 words. So if you trade the DAX 30 euro dollar as a retail client or as a professional client, you will see the differences in margin requirements here. 24 euro, 2 to 600 euro, that's a small difference. Retail clients against professional clients. And retail clients will have an unlimited protection against negative balances. Professional clients will have a protection up to 50,000 British pounds, what is around about 70,000 euro, according to our negative balance protection policy. Check all the details out on admiralmarkets.com. This is me. My name is Jens. My English made in Germany. We are a big international broker, over 18 country offices, but I'm not the main speaker. The main speaker is the day trader of today. Usually this is our scheme. Usually on Monday at Jay's day, on Tuesday it's Paul Day, on Wednesday it's Giancarlo's day, on Thursday it's Marco's day, on Friday it's DX day. But from time to time, a trade trader is unable to join. Like today, Jay is unable to join. So that's why today my colleague Jens will be yeah, the day trader of today and will go through the markets with you. But doesn't matter who it is, our leading day traders live every business day, every day trading day to the same time. And of course, if you like to trade Forex and CFDs, you will get many benefits only with us. For example, DAX 30 or also Euro dollar typical spread doing main trading hours of just 0 0.8 points or pips without additional commission. Also here, all details on altmermarkets.com. On altmermarkets.com, you will find also how to contact us. You can call us. You can send us an email or some information about our regulatory background. Everything, of course, on our web pages. Enough from my side. Thank you, Jens, that you joined today. Jay, unable to join, for, uh, but he will be next week again, I hope. So, Jay, Jens, what's your view to the markets today? Yes. Good morning also from my side. Um, by the way, I just hope that everyone can hear me well. So far here in the uh, um, uh, um, back end, everything seems to be fine. If that's not the case, please just uh, shoot, shoot over um, a short message in the uh, um, chat box. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm really happy to be here today. Um, I, by the way, I'm also located in Berlin. So for me, it's a good morning too. And um, I've prepared already something, something really interesting, I have to say. After the ECB last week on um, Thursday, it looked quite good for the euro. Um, let's just switch over to the price action right here. So you can see the order already. It's in Euro JPY. Um, we'll go through the details here in a few seconds and I will also uh, present to you um, a target performance comparison by the way for this approach so I've, I've been there or I've been here for several times already in the past and uh, this was one of my favorite setups I presented and I, I think that you are probably really interested in um, how it worked over the last in this case by the way it's three months uh, performance so far um, and uh, we've seen a drawdown but nevertheless recovered most of the losses already but first of all let's have a look at the current situation and um, what, what, what just happened here um, you can not only see this in euro JPY but also for example in the euro USD so um, here that was last week let's by the way take out those Fibonacci here um, that was zoom into the chart that was the candle from last week Thursday and there was this push towards 117 and on Friday already in the early hours of trading into the weekly close there 
um, we've seen a push above 117 and then into the weekly close the euro um, started to weaken quite dramatically if, if you ask me because we started the day on Thursday here already um, around 116.30 and we closed below the opening of the day before of the ECB and um, it was very in fact to me, it was quite difficult to say what's the reason for that. Um, but after um, after um, some 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 research, I found out that there was an interesting um, announcement made over the day. It was that a guy called Mario Nava, he's what well, he was, the head of the Italian stock market regulator, the CONSOP, some of you probably have heard about this. Um, it was said that he resigned after um, rising um, um, pressure here from the right-wing parties, oh, especially uh, um, the, uh, I think, Lega Nord, and also the Five Star uh, movement here around uh, Beppe Grillo. And um, now, the thing is that alone, if you, if you consider this fact alone, for, for it alone, I, it's, it's meaningless. So no one really knows who is Mario Nava. I didn't know him before I read this news. But the thing is that in context of different developments here, especially uh, in Italy from a political landscape, it seems, and that was quite obvious, because if you look at the price action, the market tells you um, what it feels about this, this announcement here. Um, it was that it's skepticism starts to rise again here around Italy and um, that's that's also something which can be seen when looking at the yield markets for example especially Italian bonds and, and their yields here and that was the potential reason why the euro weren't capable or wasn't capable of taking on further momentum on the downside respectively um, 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 yeah, save most of the gains of the day before into the weekly close here. So therefore, it's it's definitely worth to switch over to the websites um, to uh, Admiral Markets. Um, and here we can already have a look at the so-called traders block. So if you go to AdmiralMarkets.com, uh, there um, under analytics, under the top analytics, there's the traders block, and there is here the headline. That's right at the top of the of this um, um, section here on the website. It's euro about to take on serious momentum against the U.S. dollar, and the question: Will it be sustainable? So the interesting thing here about this is that um, I read the news here over the weekend, and um, so you can't really find these thoughts within this this um, um, article here, but there are other important aspects which needs to be pointed out or pointed out. So for example, first of all, what's, what was the reason why the euro gained against the um, against the US dollar on uh, Thursday um, over, over the ECB? I think the main reason was that during the press conference that can be, you can read it here, um, there was there was a question uh, towards Mario Draghi, he was asked if he would allow inflation to overshoot if the ECB's target level at 2% uh, was, um, yeah, was overshoot. Some, some of you might recall that this is a very interesting question. It was already a question which was um, um, a topic around the Bank of England, for example. Uh, there, the uh, Bank of England, respectively Mark Carney, was once asked whether he would allow inflation to overshoot and he answered this with a clear yes. The same is, by the way, true for the Fed. Um, the Fed, over uh, the last months, and especially last time, um, when it gave an announcement, respectively a statement, um, it said, or it read here, that it's allowing inflation to become symmetrical above 2%. Um, and this is, in fact, quite dovish to comp compare to what Draghi just said, that he meant that he won't allow, or the ECB won't allow such an overshooting in inflation here. This is an overall bullish sign for the euro and can really well explain, in my opinion, why the euro um, pushed towards 117. Obviously, nevertheless, there are several other reasons to be skeptical about the bullish outlook for the euro. All in all, yes, to some extent, one can understand that. Um, nevertheless, when looking, for example, here at the yield differential, this is a chart. It's, quite old to be honest because it's from Wednesday the 12th of September that was the day before the Fed I'm sorry the ECB gave their statement and Mario Draghi answered the way he did um, it was that here uh, in this in this uh, two-year yield differential um, where the US yields are compared to European yields and you can see this by the way here in white um, that this potentially um, is a sign for weaker euro 
but the euro was capable of taking on momentum here you can see this by the way that's an old chart because we traded around 11570 here so below 116 on wednesday and then we took on momentum here and nevertheless if you if you just look at this this chart it, it usually is a sign that rather sooner or later um the blue line will follow the the white line the heels so this is this is one of the main drivers in the FX markets. Something you definitely have to, to understand when trading FX, and this is one sign which is at least not that positive for the euro at all. So it's like, um, it, or let's put it that way. So if you take this yield picture and you combine it with the current rising tensions again around Italy, it's not very positive for the euro at all, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm somehow a little skeptical for long engagements in the euro. Now, let's come to the setup here. Obviously, it does not play such a big role in my trading for today because this is a setup which is working with a bar limit currently. So I'm only waiting for um, uh, the market to trade back here towards 130.40 and um, would go long Euro JPY against this level. Um, the, the, the interesting thing is that around one, one and a half hour ago, I was quite happy um, because here the first order which was entered was a short um, order, it was a sell stop. We traded below this purple line and this, what we are looking at here is this trading range. It's um, this, these two horizontal blue lines showing us the Asia um, 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 open range. It's not an open range, but it's, an, it's the the system itself, we could call it Asia breakout system or something. So here you look at a time span, in this case from uh, 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. German time, and then you say where's the high, where's the low, and if we trade above this purple line, which is the exponential moving average 11 here, we are only trading breakouts on the upside, while if we trade below this purple line, we're only trading um, trades on the downside here. In this case, um, and based on what I just presented around my skepticism around the euro, I was happy to, to enter a short order, but now I had to switch because there was, I don't, I don't really know, by the way, what, what's the reason for that, because it's very difficult to find um, a good reason for this current push, and not only, by the way, in the euro here on the upside, but also in stocks. So the DAX, we'll have a look at it a little later, um, but the DAX also has seen some weakness into the start of the trading day and then immediately shot up 60 points. And it's really difficult to say. One potential reason is that um, the uh, French Prime Minister Macron just said that it is indispensable to find an accord for the Brexit. That's very yeah, that, that, that goes hand in hand with the comments from uh, Mr. Barnier, which is the chief negotiator from the European Union, and who said that um, they are probably about to find a solution here quite quick. Um, so, but the only problem I have with this is that, when well, now let's switch over to the pound. Um, you can't really see that pound sterling is, uh, yeah, is, is pushing aggressively higher, but it's, it's like as no one ever mentioned anything. So there's a slight push, yes, but this, this here, was was far more aggressive, push higher um, in the past already than this is a 50 minute chart than the, what we've seen so far. So I'm somehow a little, I think it's a very difficult situation to say that this has something to do with the Brexit because pound sterling does not react um, as it should in this case. So shooting higher too. Um, so, but how, whatever the reason is, um, I think it's a matter of fact that here we can, we can right now clearly find a setup which here I've already written down so we are working with the buy limit by the way you, you probably wonder why buy limit why is it not um, a buy stop here in this case so what we do is we define the range as I already said between 3 to 10 a.m. German time and now the thing is and that does not happen that often but if the market pushes out of this range here um, and is trading above that the range does not change so that means that you were then working with such a buy limit in this case. So we, we are only buying um, if the market trades back to this level and then trade the, the Euro JPY in this case from there. So um, it's entry long buy limit, it's 130.40. The stop, so wasn't triggered yet by the way, the stop is 130.09. It's a risk of 31 pips. And then we're working with a, a statistically based um, um, target which is uh, 53 pips away. So it's 1.7, and it's, we are working with a target of 1.7 R in this case. Uh, there's 53 pips, we add those 53, 
up to our entry point, which is 13040 plus 53 pips. So it's 130.93, and that's the setup for today. So this is the setup, okay, fine. But nevertheless, as I already said, you're probably interested in how it performed so far. And um, so therefore, we're currently, um, I'm seeing a very well performance. Um, so after a, a hit here on the, on the downside, this is, by the way, a real account I'm, I'm presenting to you here. And then you can see that obviously we made it back above um, uh, here, the, the line in the sand, which is zero. So we, we wanna see making money and everything above zero is making money for us. And um, as you can see here, currently we're stabilizing above that level after seeing a drop here of around um, yeah, 5% in this case. So it's a small account. It's not a big one, but it's just uh, um, um, for illustration purposes in this case. So it's a 2,000 euro account. You see a back um, 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 drop here of 100 euro that equals to around 5%. And from there, you are capable of taking on momentum here and now making it above this line here. So this is the performance so far within this time span from the 14th of June till the 14th of September, um, we have a hit rate of 50% and the payoff ratio, which is compared to how the target um, presents itself, is not such a great number here, in fact. I think there is some potential on the upside. The target can be found here. So usually the hit rate is around 48%. So currently we're obviously better than our target with a hit rate of 50%. Nevertheless, the payoff ratio is 1.3 to one here. Um, while the payoff ratio here is 1.06 to one, it's still better than one to one, but nevertheless, it's not as good as we are uh, as our target um, um, is here in this case. This is, by the way, a first sign. If you if you want to make um, um, some some do some research here and find out how well does this setup perform so far, or how does it perform currently, you can see that obviously the market has serious problems here to take on momentum once we are triggered in which direction you want. It's the long side or it's the short side, doesn't really matter. But the market can't really push in our direction if it pushes. Um, it, it's still okay. So on average, we're making um, um, the same amount as if we're losing here, slightly more than that, by the way. So in, with a hit rate here, we can see a slight positive um, um, a result. Nevertheless, there's some, some further further potential here from a payoff perspective and hopefully market conditions will change towards our um, uh, work in, in, in favor of our trading approach here um, and yeah I keep you posted by the way on, on, on how this develops it's just to make sure that you see okay it's not only a setup I present here but you have a real um, account which is traded that way and I again keep you posted on, on how the performance uh, works out here so yeah, in fact, that's it. Um, nothing more to say about that. So, so far, we're still waiting. The market has to come down those uh, three pips here, and then we're triggered. Um, this now, based on the fact that the setup is already entered here, so the order can be found here in this in this um, 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 tab already. So we have now time to have a look at another currency pair, which I consider to be real interesting this week of trading. Um, it's an, in fact very exotic currency pair. It's the Kiwi dollar. It's the NZD USD here. But there's also something really, really interesting happening. Therefore, let's first switch over to the website here from Admiral Markets, and then have a look at those um, uh, at this tab again, analytics. This is the same one here, um, as you can see um, where you find the traders block. It's right above that. It's the forex calendar, and there, what I did so far was um, I prepared. Wait, it's not true. Now we can rerun it. And what you can see is um, you have a chance to see all data which will be published within that week. You can, by the way, see that today is a very thin market environment, in fact, so nothing big will happen. The only potential driver is probably a tweet from Donald Trump, whatever. But around the NZD, you can see, okay, there's some data published, but the most interesting data set around the Kiwi dollar here is this one, the GDP growth rate, which will be published on Wednesday evening. So now some of you might say, okay, really? I mean, New Zealand is far, far, far away. Is it really that interesting? Yes, because, um, and here we come back to the, uh, to the, to the yields. Um, the thing is that currently the swap markets, um, this is um, um, a market which is really interesting for us as currency pra uh, traders. Um, the swap market give you an idea of how likely it is that a central bank will move in the future. 
that they will hike or cut rates. And currently, it is uh, that the overnight index swap rates show that there's a certain, sorry, there's a 30% chance of a rate cut in February 19. So still some, some way to go, but what we do in the markets, when we trade the markets, is that we trade um, um, the expectation for the future. And uh, here in this context, um, um, it means that obviously in the next six months, there's at least one rate cut expected. So why is GDP data then interesting? It's interesting because um, currently we expect year on year a data set of 2.5%, in fact. And um, the interesting thing about this is that this would be the lowest reading since Q4 2013. So it hasn't been uh, that, yeah, I mean, it's still positive growth. I think in the European Union, for example, we would cheer um, if we can see such a, such a um, growth rate here and from GDP perspective year on year. Nevertheless, it, it would be in case of the NZD or uh, New Zealand, would be uh, the lowest reading since Q4 2013. So now, if numbers come in as they came in before, so um, for, for um, um, or last time when this number was published, 2.7. So everything above expectation could be um, a sign that probably such rate cut bets would be reduced. This is something which is definitely bullish for the um, um, Kiwi dollar in this case, which means nothing more than here, this technical picture then starts to, uh, to, to become really, really interesting. We can see here that there's a bullish divergence forming on the daily chart. Um, that means we make lower lows. And here, these are not confirmed in the 14 RSI anymore which is a sign that the bullish, I'm sorry, the bearish momentum here on the downside starts to obviously diminish. Um, and now the thing is that this is probably a first sign which could um, 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 be a, um, um, a hint towards a push higher in the key dollar then, again, in this case against the US dollar, pushing us, I'm not sure if we can really make it up to 67.30, but nevertheless, this is our potential first target on the upside we are going after, because if we make it towards and above that level, that's the first sign from which um, this structure of falling highs and falling lows, which we can see here in Kiwi dollar since uh, April forming, um, that would be a first sign that this structure is at least interrupted, if not broken. So this is definitely something uh, worth watching. Um, even though this data set um, is published during yeah, nearly night, so uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, or it's definitely worth to probably stay awake and watch how um, the Kiwi here in this case uh, performs on such a, that's such a GDP data set. Every number coming in above expectation could push Kiwi dollar against USD higher. So, and finally, I've promised you to have at least a, a look here in the DAX. This is, by the way, something which is not that surprising. Um, so what you can clearly see here right now is uh, the DAX giving back those gains within several minutes. It pushed 60 points higher. Um, but nevertheless, the thing is that um, if, if this is really true, that Macron made this comment, it is indispensable to find the core for Brexit. And that was the driver, driver for, for it, the push higher in the DAX. Um, the question is always, can it be sustainable? Because it's only a statement from a politician. I mean, yeah, it's Emmanuel Macron. It's, 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 he is someone. Nevertheless, it's usually that you say political um, political exchanges usually have short legs, and this is probably something we can definitely see here. By the way, um, in the meantime, our setup was triggered. Euro JPY. You can now see we triggered here, 130.40, and now we just hope that the market can probably push up to 131. Um, yeah, and so in fact, that's that's it so far from my end. Let's just see how this setup perform, uh, how this this yeah setup in this case uh, performs. Hopefully, well for us, plays out well. So, thank you for today. We have five days a week, five different day traders. Tomorrow is another day, so hope. Hopefully we can all join you tomorrow again. And if you'd like to see and watch that again, a couple of hours later, it will be usually in our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash AdmirMarketsFX and you can find this video in round about one or two hours there. Thanks a lot to Jens. Greetings from Berlin office. Bye-bye.